Okay, my friends, it's time for some piano. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I'm so happy because we get to learn one of my favorite little themes from a Disney movie. Um, it's the joy theme from the film Inside Out. And I love this film so, so much. It is one of the best films that I have found that sort of explains the importance of mental health but in a really kid-friendly way. So I'm excited to bring you this lesson. And since it's patrons only, you get to have the exclusive lesson today. So I'm excited. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about it, okay? Um, if you're looking for the music itself, it'll be in the description of this video, okay? So the download link is there. Go ahead and download and print it. I've already printed mine and I put it inside a file folder because it makes it easy to find it later. And I label it, right? <laughs> so with that, I will uh, begin our lesson, okay? Now, giving this a little overview before we actually jump into the music itself, we've got to notice a few things, okay? Now, I see that there's actually an F sharp in the key signature and this is telling me that it's either going to be in a G major or E minor so I'm gonna play a couple notes to begin I see that the first note is a G in the left hand and a B in the right hand okay now I'm gonna look at the very end of the song and see what is being played there we have G octave in the left and a beautiful chord in the right. Now, to me, this is sounding more like a major song. So we're gonna say confidently that this is going to be in G major, okay? This is really good, okay? So anytime you see an F in your music, it will be an F sharp, okay? Unless there is a natural sign in front of it, okay? And that does happen a few times in this song, so be very mindful of that, okay? All right, next, we're in 4-4 four, four time. So this is good, like most of us know, four beats a measure and the quarter note getting the beat. That's a good thing, right? So with that, we can confidently go in and review the rhythm of this song, okay? Now, I would love to start learning the left hand in this song first, okay? So I'm going to switch to piano view so we can find out where we are on the piano for this song. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, excellent. So there's our beautiful piano view. Now I'm noticing here at the very beginning that my note for the left hand in the bass staff is towards the top of the bass staff, right? And I notice it's the very top space. That's actually going to be a G up here. So I'm going to begin with a G and I see that it goes up. Uh, to the next space above. It's like sitting on top of the staff, right? So that's going to be a melodic third. I see that pattern repeating itself a lot. It looks like it's two full measures of eighth notes. So let's give that a try, okay? One and two and ready and go and three and four it's the same keep going now look what happens in line two we're going down it looks like to line note to line note and I see a natural sign in front of that F so we're gonna take it down here to our finger four and we're gonna play F up a third to A thirds isn't it now you'll notice at measure nine there is some there are some big notes going on there so I'll switch back here so what's happening at measure nine in the left hand is you have a G major arpeggio it's sort of like arpeggiated or played one note at a time or melodically through this theme okay it's going from the very bottom of the bass staff now so that's telling me we're gonna be playing the G down below okay I'll switch back to piano view to show you what that looks like, okay? All right. <laughs> okay. 
So looking here at measure nine, we had just finished playing this F A, right? But now remember, I said we're going back to the bottom of the staff. So we're gonna put our pinky down here on this low G. So the notes in measure nine, very slowly, are G, D, G, cross over B. And then it's back to the G, B, right? Let's try that again, okay, very slowly. Pinky on low G. G, D, G, B, G, B, G, B. Let's try it once more, okay? This time I'm not gonna say note names, but I do want you to look at how I'm crossing over my two to the B, okay? Take a look. going with your thirds. Look at what happens at measure 11. It happens again, so we're going to go pinky all the way down to G. G, D, G, B. And it keeps going. Isn't it beautiful? One more set. Now look what happens at measure 13. Those look familiar. I see my natural signs, but we're back at the very bottom though, okay? So if we're following the melodic pattern that we had in the beginning, we were going from Gs down to F natural. So I'm gonna say we're gonna be down here on a low F natural. And we're gonna follow that same arpeggiated pattern. We're gonna go like this at 13. F, C, F, cross over A, F, Let's try that again at 13. Here we go. Low pinky F. Here we go. F, C, F, cross over A, F, A. Okay, final time. Let's start at 13. You got this. You're playing some beautiful music already. And we just started this lesson like seven minutes ago. <laughs> All right, starting there at measure 13, the final line. Um, low pinky F in our arpeggiated chord. Here we go. F, C, F, A, F. And there's that third pattern that we know very well at this point. Two more. And then at 15, we do the arpeggiated again, down to F. Oops. F, C. F, A. Very good. Continuing. Four more eighth notes. Now we have a half note F2. And there we go. Octave G with a whole note at the very end. All right. Hey, that was actually really fun. It's nice to see a, a left hand section that's not so complicated, but when you play it melodically with the right hand, it really gives it that, that feel that it's harder than it actually is. So you're gonna do a wonderful job on this song, okay? I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so um, left hand by itself, that was a really good breakdown of this one. Keep in mind those arpeggiated chords at nine, 11, 13 and 15, okay? You can practice those as many times as you need to. Build a cupcake, build a pizza, build something fun, okay? All right, now looking at the right hand, the really important thing about the right hand for this song is making sure we're getting the rhythm correct, okay? Now, our time signature is four, four time. That's a pretty standard um, time signature, right? It is, yeah. But what's important here is the syncopation. Right? And the beauty of syncopation is that you get, you get to play some notes on an offbeat or an upbeat versus on the beat, right? So if we're counting like this, one and two and three and four and, right? The and would be considered your upbeat, okay? One and two and three and four and. Okay, 
Now with the introduction here of dotted quarter notes, that is already putting us on an offbeat, okay? On an upbeat when we have that because a dotted quarter is made up of three eighth notes. So that would be the one and two, right? There's three eighth notes. And then on the next note, it's on the upbeat and three and four and, right? Yeah, so let's, let's play it through very slowly. I'll see if you can get that rhythm, okay? Let's switch to piano view. Okay, quick sip of water. Very good, okay. So I'm looking here at the um, treble staff and I actually see my very first note floating above the staff, oh my goodness. So we know that the very top space of the staff is a G. And if we go up one line to that little ledger line, that's an A, and then the next one is a B. Okay, so that's actually gonna be my first note. I'm gonna start with my finger three on that B so that I have enough fingers for this melody pattern, okay? So let's give it a try. I'm gonna do my counting out loud with my one and two ands so that you can hear when the notes are moving, okay? Let's try it. One and two and ready and go. And one and two and three and four 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 and it's tricky isn't it <laughs> let me slow it down okay now going over our notes let's do that too okay the rhythm is important, but obviously so are the notes. We don't want to miss any notes. So I'm going to play that top line again, saying my right hand note names, okay? I'm starting with that finger three on my B. Here we go. One and two and ready and go. And B, B, A, G, A, B, G, A, G, F sharp, B, G, A, G, F sharp, B, C, C, B, G. There you go, that's that top line, okay? It really frolics. It's, it's giving me this like frolicking feel, right? Um, going through all of these beautiful syncopations, right? As you're doing the counting, if you wanna write out your counts, you can absolutely do that, right? One and two and three and four and 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 it's tricky but that will help you quite a bit remember to write in those counts with the eighth note right the one and two and three and four and but line them up remember Three eighth notes equal one dotted quarter. One quarter note equals two eighth notes. And if it's tied to something, remember to add that one too. Okay? I'm gonna play the top line again, but this time I'm not gonna say anything and we're gonna move on to the second one. Okay? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> A little bit of water. Okay, so starting here. At the beginning again, we're at our B. I'm starting with my finger three. I'm not gonna say anything this time, so pay close attention, okay? One and two and ready and go and.
have line two, right? So that was line one and line two. Oops, there we go. <laughs> line one and line two. And the beauty of that is really, really seeing how the melodic pattern changes with the addition of the natural sign, right? It sounds so different. Um, it gives it that really, it, it just hooks your audience so well. Um, I like that because it's not something that is expected in something that's in G major, right? So you've got the initial part of it playing this F natural A Really beautiful stuff. It's pretty crazy that I actually sang that. <laughs> it's early in the morning here. So apologize if it sounded kind of silly. Um, it's really, really great. The, the syncopation, I feel, is probably the most important. So as long as you're lining up those notes with your counts really well, you'll be able to get it. Remember, there's nothing wrong with going super snail slow, okay? Especially when you're in the beginning stages of learning a piece. There's nothing wrong with that. Remember, accuracy over speed to begin, okay? All right, so let me play that second line once more with notes so that you can hear it, okay? And then we'll move on. Okay, so line two, I'm gonna start right there on that F natural, okay? Let's see here. So you actually end up on a thumb F but then while you're changing, while you're holding it, you're gonna shift your finger three down, okay? So I'm gonna start there with my thumb. One and two and, ready and go. And one and two and three and, oh yeah, I was supposed to say note names. <laughs> Let me try that again, here we go. One and two and, ready and go. And F and two, A, two, G, F, G, A, F, G, F, E, A, F, G, F, E, A, A, C, B, A, G. Very good. Now at measure nine, you're gonna have something really interesting. Now at measure nine, you see it's actually going to be what is called a a second inversion one chord, okay? So my adult students, we've been learning sort of like uh, primary chords, right? So you know your one chord. So or your one chord in G major is a G major chord, okay? But there's different ways to stack the notes, okay? You'll notice that it is a second inversion one chord because we have the top note, which typically happens in the triad, your D, it's actually on the bottom, okay? It's sort of holding up the other third, okay? I'll show you that in piano view just right now. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's hard to explain it without seeing it at the piano. So what I'm talking about is this. Here's your G triad, G, B, D, okay? That triad can be shifted, and we'll put this G up here instead. Now that's considered a first inversion one chord. And then you can put this B on top and have your B on top. And that's your second inversion, one chord. Now the one that's written at measure nine is that one. It's a second inversion, one chord. And it's got this squiggly little line next to it, okay? That's actually saying play it arpeggiated or one note at a time very quickly. D, G, B, and then you have your B again with the melody. A, G, A, B, G, A, G, F sharp, B, G, A, G, F sharp, B, C, C, B, G, and then look, another arpeggiated second inversion, or this is actually a first inversion. Yes, because this one's actually building on the F natural natural triad, but we're going to put the F on top. So that's the difference. This one has the third on the bottom, whereas the other one had the third on top, 
Okay. So that arpeggiated chord at measure 13, right hand, is A, C, F. Now played quickly, it sounds like this. All right. So let's keep going with that. Ready? One and two and ready. And last line. A, G, F, G, A, F, G, F, E, A, F, G, F, E, A, E, C, B, A, G. Now we have an interesting chord here. D, F sharp, G, B. Okay, here we go. Very good. This is basically like um, playing a uh, it's like a one chord, but adding the seventh, the major seven on top, it's not diminished. It's okay. But instead of playing it in this form, they're having you put the B on top, G, then the F sharp, and then the D. That chord itself, if you're like a, <laughs> a Gen X or like millennial, you'll remember the, the Goonies. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, it sounds like the Goonies chord, right? So that last final chord is really beautiful, played arpeggiated, and luckily they've given us that notation as well. Okay, so don't forget the F sharp in the final chord. So that's the right hand, okay? Once you've given yourself the time and space to go over this slowly, hands apart, really feeling good about your syncopation in the right hand, and that consistent third and eighth note pattern in the left, you will be ready to put this hands together, okay? And it's so pretty when it's hands together, all right? Now, we haven't talked about dynamics, which we're gonna do right now, okay? So the beginning of this piece says it's going to start piano, okay? Well, that's pretty straightforward, nice and quiet for those first two lines. But then look what happens at the end of line two. We have a crescendo. That crescendo is leading into that arpeggiated uh, chord, one chord at measure nine, right? But look, it's not getting that loud. It's at a mezzo piano. So it's slightly louder, but not too much, okay? Now going across the line there on line three, it's mezzo piano the whole time. Same with line four until the very end where it gives you a diminuendo. Back to piano, right? Yeah, it's beautiful. So we'll do that diminuendo at the end, okay? Now, finally, let's talk about tempo and pedaling, okay? Tempo, at the beginning, it says con brillo, right? Con brillo. That means pretty much it's going to be lively, it's going to be brisk, right? So it's gotta feel like it's moving somewhere, right? This is supposed to emulate joy. In the film Inside Out, eat, there's little characters that emulate each emotion, right? There's anger, there's disgust, there's sadness and there's joy, okay? This theme is the joy theme, okay? That's what makes it so, so beautiful. You have to really communicate that joy to your audience, okay? And the pedaling is fairly straightforward with this. We have pedaling in groups of two measures, okay? You'll hold the pedal down for two measures, lift. Press it down again, hold for two measures, lift. And that happens throughout the entire song until you reach the ending chord, okay? Now, as a personal uh, styling at the very end, I also like to add a ritardando, right? I like to slow it down a little because that's letting my audience know that this is the end of this beautiful piece, okay? If you feel like you don't want to add a ritardando, that's totally fine, but just because I like to make it my own, I like to give it an extra ritardando, okay? Awesome, okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to play this hands together slowly to begin, so you can follow along, okay? Once we've gone through slowly, then I'll play it a tempo, okay? Let's do it, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. Nice and slowly, I've got my hands in position, high B for my right hand, and my G in my left. Here we go. This is slowly through Inside Out's joy theme.
Yeah, so I messed up. That's okay. Because at measure 13, you remember me talking about how it was a first inversion versus a second inversion? Yeah. In my head, as an adult, a lot of times it's really difficult to get that right the first time, right? So it happened to me, right? I was expecting to play a first inversion, but I ended up playing a second instead, okay? It happens. Adult learners, this is a normal thing for us, okay? Don't let that get you down, right? So on that s slow version, yes, I had one mistake. I took the time to fix it as I play, which is what you should do as well. Now I'm going to attempt to play this at con brillo, right? Briskly, okay? Let's see if that works out in our favor this time. I'll see if I can remember that first inversion F chord, okay? Let's do it together. Okay, here we go. Okay. on that one. Um, I think because I was actively thinking <laughs> first inversion, first inversion, first inversion, <laughs> I actually was pretty successful with that. So that's good. All right. Um, I do believe that I still probably need some work on the dynamics, right? Um, I play things, naturally I play things pretty loud, <laughs> so I need to be more mindful. Um, if you find that you're also playing it a little too loud or uh, loudly, grammar shark. <laughs> Uh, you can use your soft pedal if you've got one on your piano or keyboard, okay? That would be the, the pedal furthest to the left. You'll press and hold it down for the entire piece, okay? That way you can keep your dynamics in check, okay? Now, did you like the retardando at the end? I thought it was beautiful. That's just like one of the things that I like to add. So if you want to add it too, you're more than welcome to, okay? Well, that concludes our patron-only lesson. I hope you enjoyed this exclusive lesson. I, I forgot to put the thing on the whole time. <laughs> this Patreon-exclusive lesson. I had a blast. This is, uh, this is definitely one of my favorite songs that we've learned. And I wanted to keep it exclusive to you guys because you were the ones who were supporting me and making all of this happen. I wouldn't be as successful as I am without you guys. So I appreciate you so very much. <laughs> Um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, I hope you have a blast learning it. And remember, if you need some extra help, hop on Discord, right? If you haven't joined our Discord server yet, you join that, okay? I'll put you in your respective classes and you can ask specifically about these pieces in the patrons only channel, okay? I'd love to help you, okay? All right, well, happy learning. I'll see you all very soon. Take care. Bye.